Hey everybody, over the past few weeks we've had a ton of clear nights in eastern Idaho, and this has been fantastic for capturing data. I'm getting more now than I ever have before. Unfortunately, I've also been encountering more bugs and problems than I ever have before, and that's going to be the focus of today's video. I want to explain all the problems that I've encountered, and I want to tell you more importantly how to fix those issues if you encounter them as well. If you've watched my previous video on this topic, then you know some of the problems I encountered, and I'll explain how I fixed those as well. The first problem I want to talk about today is guiding. Because guiding can be a bit of a black box. You put in some settings, but you're not really sure what's going on. And to be honest, for most of the last five years, I've used the same guide settings regardless of the mount, the camera, or anything else I was using, and I never had any problems. It wasn't until I was using the AM5N and photographing up near the North Celestial Pole that I encountered these weird RA spikes on my guiding graph. I did reach out to ZWO and submitted a bug report, but unfortunately they never really gave me a straight answer on what to do or what to try, and therefore it was up to me to figure it out. That's one of the main takeaways from this whole video is that, really, for all of us, it comes down to our own troubleshooting skills and how much BS we're willing to put up with in a single night to see if we can solve our own problems. Anyway, I did some more research on guiding and the different parameters you can set, and I stumbled upon this great article, which really goes into a lot of detail, especially regarding the AM5 mounts. And what I realized is that my original guide settings were probably too slow for the AM5. I was doing three second long exposures, and my guide speed was like 0.25x, among some other concerns. So what I did is I increased the guide speed from 0.25x to 0.5x and even 0.75x, and that alone seemed to help. In addition to that, I changed my guiding exposure from three seconds down to one second. I also lowered the RA and deck aggression from like 70 or 80 down to around 40%. Once I had all these changes dialed in, I began my guiding again, and to my surprise, the RA spikes that I'd been encountering the last few nights disappeared. The guiding graph was much smoother, and overall my total error was considerably lower. And that would be my first bit of advice, is that if you're having guiding issues or anything like that, try adjusting your different guide settings and see if you can get those numbers dialed in a bit better. I will have a separate video on this topic in the future because I think it's a good learning experience for everybody. In the meantime though, be sure to consult that article, which I referenced just a minute ago. So that was my first problem, was the guiding spikes which were ruining my photos after the Meridian flip. That's another thing I should mention, is that all these problems only started happening after the Meridian flip. They were fine beforehand. Unfortunately, even after I fixed the guiding though, I was still getting some star motion after the Meridian flip. And because of these problems, I also reached out to ZWO again, told them what was going on, never really got an answer. I said, all right, well, I guess I'll figure this out too. So what I did is I found a counterweight rod for the AM5N, which I had lying around, thankfully. Then I grabbed an old three pound Skyguider Pro weight, which I had, and I was thinking, okay, if I'm getting star motion, this seems reminiscent of the Skyguider Pro, where if you have too much camera weight, the motor struggles to move it, and you get basically small star trails. Thankfully, once I attached the counterweight rod and the counterweight to the AM5N, that fixed the star motion after the meridian flip. And what that tells me is that because my telescope was at that kind of extreme angle aimed up high, the AM5N's motor or something was having trouble moving it reliably over the course of my five minute long exposures. But once I had the counterweight, that helped to balance things out and the motor had an easier time. But that shouldn't really be a problem because I'm using the SpaceCat 61 telescope, which only weighs about eight pounds, along with the 2600 air, which maybe weighs one or two pounds at most. All told, I'm definitely under 12 pounds, and the AM5N is supposed to handle 20 pounds or more without needing a counterweight. I don't know if I have a defective unit or what's going on, hopefully ZWO will give me an answer, but in the meantime, the counterweight solved the issue. So if you are encountering strange star motion and you know your guiding is good, that would be my first bit of advice, is to buy that optional counterweight rod for $40, and if you want a counterweight, I know the Skyguider Pro counterweights will work, so you can go for one or two of those as well. Next up, I want to touch on the power problems with the 2600 Air. If you saw my previous video, then you'll recall that I was having all kinds of weird issues with the 2600 Air, and at the time I thought it was software related, but the more I started to experiment, the more I realized it was power related. And so if you buy the 2600 Air, my best bit of advice is to power the camera separately from the mount. 
do not use the power output on your AM5 or whatever mount you have to power the 2600 area will likely not be enough. My current setup is I have a Jackery battery with a 12 volt cable powering the 2600 air. Then I have a second battery right next to it with another 12 volt cable that powers the AM5N. It's not a perfect solution because now I need two batteries, but at least all the problems have been fixed and I haven't had a single issue since I powered the 2600 air through its own separate battery. And I actually heard back from ZWO this morning regarding this issue and what they recommend is to actually power the AM5N through the 2600 air, which is the opposite of what I'd been doing. In other words, you'd have a 12 volt cable going to your battery that would power the 2600 air. Then you could take one of those power cables, plug one end into the 2600 air and the other end into the AM5. And that should be enough to get everything up and running. Another annoying but minor issue that I've been having is the location bug with some Android phones. What happens is if you go into your app and you click on the location button, very likely what you'll see if you're on Android is that the location is set to China. And that means when you go through the initial setup, all your mount settings will be screwed up because it thinks it's in China and nothing's going to work the way you want. Of course, you can manually input your coordinates if you know them offhand, but that's very cumbersome and you have to do it every single night. I have sent this as a bug report to ZWO. I'd recommend you do the same if you're having an issue. That way they can finally get this thing fixed because it seems like it's been around for many years now and it's incredibly frustrating. The way I fixed it though was just to grab an old phone. It seems like my Pixel 7, which I'm currently using, has this bug where the location never updates, but my older Samsung phone does not have this issue and it will properly grab my actual coordinates. I've also got an iPad, which does not have this issue and my girlfriend started using her iPhone rather than her Android phone. That way we didn't have to deal with entering the location manually every single night. I do realize that many of us only have one phone and therefore this is not a solution, but if you do have an old phone lying around, put the ASI app on it, start it up and see if it'll actually pull on your correct coordinates. And then you can just use that for the ASI at night. The final problem I encountered this week was the firmware update for the ASI Air. And that's why I said in my previous video, it's always a good idea to disable the auto updates for the ASI Air app. Because what happened to me is the app auto updated, I forgot to turn it off. And then the firmware had to be installed when I turned on my ASI Air mini. There was no way around it. And what happened was I was doing the firmware update and normally it loses connection halfway through, then it reconnects, but it actually reconnected to the 2600 Airs Wi-Fi network instead. And that must have broken something because from that point forward, the ASI or Mini no longer generated a Wi-Fi network. And it was basically a bricked unit. I couldn't do anything with it. So I ended up wasting an hour of a perfectly good night trying to troubleshoot this problem and bring the ASI or Mini back to life. Thankfully, the solution was pretty simple once I figured it out. If you have the same problem, what you want to do is turn everything off. Then you're going to hold down the reset button on the back of the ASI or Mini. With the reset button held down, you're going to turn on your battery and I'd say wait about 10 seconds with that button held down. If you do this correctly, it will reset all the Wi-Fi parameters and you won't hear the beep or anything else, but the Wi-Fi settings will have been fixed. Then you can let go of the reset button after about 10 seconds, turn off the battery. I would wait about five or 10 seconds again, turn on the battery once again, and now you'll hear the loud beep and the ASR will be back to its original Wi-Fi name with the original password. Then you can connect to it, ensure that the firmware was updated properly, and you can adjust the Wi-Fi settings back to whatever you'd like them to be. All right, well, that's about all the problems I've encountered over the last month. Thankfully, they're all fixed now, and I can finally enjoy this new moon cycle and capture a lot of data. My final bit of advice is to just hang in there, because I know how frustrating it is to get to 11 or 12 o'clock at night and have to deal with these software issues or whatever problems you're encountering. That's the last thing you want to deal with. And the unfortunate reality of this situation is that it's up to you to find a solution. You can submit a bug report to ZWO and it might take them days, weeks, or months to get back to you with a solution. You can also look online and spend hours and not find what you're looking for. And that's why you have to think about things logically and have this troubleshooter mindset like I did when I had the star trail motion with the AM5N. When I'm seeing trailing, especially in just five minute long exposures, that tells me either my polar alignment's wrong there's something screwed up with the guiding, the tracker is not moving properly, something like that. And while it could be a defective unit, 
That would take weeks to resolve, so I tried to find a faster solution. And since I had a counterweight and a counterweight rod lying around, I said, well, maybe it's just that my telescope is too heavy. It shouldn't be, but that's something I can try to rule out. Thankfully, once I had that counterweight, that solved the problem, and now I no longer have any issues after the Meridian flip. But that's all I've got for you today. I hope these tips help you out if you're also encountering issues, and when you head out on your next clear night, you can start capturing some amazing data.